What's up, my wizards? It's Deb from SBMTG on the YouTube.com. We like magic. More Eldritch Moon spoilers today because that's been my life for the last couple of weeks. But, you know, I'm happy about that. Still love spoiler season. We got some cool stuff today, Tuesday, July the 5th, 2016. So let's check some of these out. There's one card in particular that I really, really can't wait to talk about. Well, first, we'll talk about the stuff that was spoiled super, super late last night at like 3 o'clock in the morning, my time. There are a few things. We've already talked about Crypt Breaker. If you haven't seen that, I gave it its own video. You can click on this when you're done watching this. So, the other cards that were spoiled very, very late last night, start with this guy right here. Mercurial Geists. It's four mana. That's two, a blue, and a red for a 1-3 spirit with flying. And it has, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Mercurial Geist gets plus three, plus zero oh until end of turn. Well, obviously this is meant for draft, mostly, you know, the Limited Madness deck probably wants this, but there's cool things we can do with this in Standard and Budget decks, definitely. I love creatures like this, you know, uh, what, Nivix Cyclops is always a fun one. So I like this, and there's always the possibility of, you know, turn four this, turn five Uncaged Fury, and deal at least ten damage, barring any other pump spells you play. As a matter of fact, if you played Teamer, you could play, like, or you don't even have to play Teamer, you could play, um, what is it? The Hedron um, thing, it's two mana, it taps for a colorless. You play that turn two, this turn three, turn four Uncaged Fury and like a Titan Strength, and that's like 22 damage. So, you could win the game on this um, turn four. So, I, you know, card looks at least fun in budget builds, we'll probably try to make that happen, but it's definitely mostly just meant for limited play. And Eldrazi reared its ugly head today. We haven't seen one of those in a couple of days. It feels like at least. But we got this guy last night. This is Lash Weed Lurker. <laughs> Hilarious name. Um, the art is cool though. He's 8 generic mana for a 5-4 Eldrazi Horror with a merge. 5 generic, a green, and a blue. That's 7. When you cast Lash Weed Lurker, you may put target non-land permanent on top of its owner's library. A sacking a 3-drop for this on turn 4 actually seems like pretty good value. You get a big 5-power guy, and you get to do a really good tempo play. But, you know, I'm just not sure that's worth it, especially if you have to lose your 3-drop. You know, Emerge looks really, really good. I just wish every Emerge creature had Flash. That would, that would be out of control. But I do like this guy in, in a lot of ways. I think he's fantastic and limited, definitely. But looks at least decent. I'm just not sure he'll make standard. Up next is Ride Down, a reprint from a fairly recent set, you know, and it's a classic. I won't even put the graphic up for it, just a story blocking creature, and anything that was attacking into it gains trample. So that's pretty much it. Um, just, you know, again, classic limited removal. It was very good the first time around in draft specifically, and, you know, sealed. So probably going to see it in that environment again, and again, nothing else. That's how it was the first time, and I really don't see it being any different this time. There was one more card spoiled very late last night, but I'm going to leave it and talk about it last, actually. I'm going to save it, because that's the one I want to talk about for a while. Um, up next is Falcon Wrath Reaver. I'm not even going to put the graphic up for it either. It's just a 2 mana 2-2 two -two that's a vampire. Relevant creature type, you'll probably play it as your 23rd creature in, you know, draft, maybe. I don't know. It's just probably, I think we found it. This is the most boring card that we've seen during spoiler season so far, and I've already talked too, too long about it, so let's move on. You may have noticed the pattern that most of these are limited viable, but not very constructed worthy, you know. Um, but this is maybe the most borderline standard playable thing that I've talked about today. This is Morn Willow right here. It's a generic, a green, and a black for a 3-2 plant skeleton with haste. And if Delirium is online, creatures with power 2 or less can't block the turn it enters the battlefield. So 3 mana, 3-2, decent, okay, I, I hate the 2 toughness, but it does have haste, they slap that on there, that makes it a little bit more playable. Stats are okay, and the Delirium ability may be what pulls it out of the sideboard. When I say pull it out of the sideboard, I mean against green-white tokens builds. It seems pretty decent against those builds before they've gotten all their anthems and plus one, plus one counters up, you know. Just decent mid-game trick to try to break board stalls against them. That doesn't seem too bad at all out of the board, but again, I'm just not sure that this is going to see any standard play, but it is a, a pretty standout limited card. Alright, here's a card that's a little bit more standard playable, but it too is is borderline, people are saying. Actually, I'm, I'm a big fan of this. Let's check it out. This is Mirror Wing Dragon right here. It's five mana, that's three and two red for a four five dragon with flying. And whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell that targets only mirror wing dragon, that player copies that spell for each other creature he or she controls that the spell could target. Each copy targets a different one of those creatures. Okay, so basically this works one of three main ways. If they try to cast removal that targets it, say ruinous path, then they'll end up ruinous pathing their entire team of guys. 
That's awesome. <laughs> it's really, really good. You could also, yourself, cast a pump spell on the dragon, and that pumps your entire team. That's really good, too. The only downside is, if they cast, for whatever reason, a pump spell on your dragon, they'll also pump their entire team. So this is a double-edged sword, but pump effects are not very popular in Standard. What's the most common pump spell in Standard? Exactly. Titan Strength? Confront the unknown? I don't know, but really it's not popular at all right now to play pump spells in standard. And they're mostly played on a budget level or like tier three. So that's not as of you know as as a primary concern. Uh, really. It's mostly that we can pump our whole team Zada style. That's crazy. And if they try to remove this, this is the most important part for constructed play. If they try to remove this with targeted removal, they will bust their whole team open. And that's not good. Although control decks are the decks that are going to play the majority of the removal in standard, um, you know, like super removal heavy decks like Esper or Black White Control. And they're not really going to care so much because they're not going to have any creatures most of the time on the battlefield when they cast their removal. So that's bad too for this card. I and mean, there's a lot of things things going forward and a lot of things going against it. Um, namely, the decks that pack all the removal are going to be decks that don't care that much about their creatures leaving the battlefield. Um, although, although tokens can't declaration and stone this if they've, got, if they've got their board up, because they'll end up declarationing their entire team. <laughs> so that would be really bad for them. Um, so there are good situations for the card, I would say, but there's also decks it doesn't play very well against. So we'll see. I do think there's a case for you know mono-red dragons again in the format. Avaricious Dragon has always seemed a little like clumsy in, in some ways. It just doesn't feel quite right. It's kind of awkward. I um, mean, this could curve really well with Thunderbreak. You know, four turn Thunderbreak, next turn this, and then you've got a thing like, that's a pretty good combo, honestly, you know. Tar target one of my guys. <laughs> target one of my dudes, please. Um, so, I can see that being cool and Draconic Roar still in the format for a couple of months, so we might try that out. Um, I'm just not really sure the deck's mainstream, or the card, sees mainstream standard play. Um, but let me know how you feel about this. I, th I definitely think it's one of the more interesting cards today. Oh, and it seems like you have to say this when evaluating creatures in this standard. It's also Languish and Grasp of Darkness Proof, so there's that. But moving on to the next card, this is the most interesting card spoiled today, and maybe in the entire spoiler so far. I wouldn't say the card's great, but it's definitely like super funny and really good design. This right here is Permeating Mass. I love the name. It's just one green mana for a 1-3 spirit with check this out. Whenever Permeating Mass deals combat damage to a creature, that creature becomes a copy of Permeating Mass. Okay, so if it blocks something, or, or something blocks it, you know, that could happen too, then the creature blocking or blocked by it becomes a 1-3 with this ability, mind you. So, like in a few turns, there's these just visions of nightmares of Permeating Masses all over the board, you know. Every creature becomes a Permeating Mass in just a few turns. So, that's, that's bad. Um, just a super fun, hilarious card. Like, I love the design on this thing. I don't know that it's actually standard playable. Probably not. But people are saying that this is, on first turn, more desirable than Death Touch. Probably. You know, it's a really, really good early game. So, we'll see about this, but I definitely, like, first picked this in Limited all day. <laughs> it just seems like the funniest card ever. And, you know, you could do better, or you could do worse than a first turn 1-3, even without this ability. So, I do think the card is hilarious. <laughs> but I don't think it touches standard. Let me know how you feel about this, because this card's actually pretty deep. Two more cards to talk about. One of them's weird. It's not as weird as Permeating Mass, but it's, this card is weird. This right here is Mind's Dilation, another name that I kind of like. This is seven mana. That's five generic and two blue for an enchantment with whenever an opponent casts his or her first spell each turn, that player exiles the top card of his or her library. If it's a non-land card, you may cast it without paying its mana cost. I couldn't get through that with a straight face. This is an EDH staple, probably. Like, Commander players speak to me in the comment section. I would imagine you guys really, really like this card a lot. Um, for a couple of reasons, note the wording on this in that in a multiplayer game, if someone, you know, if it's, your, if it's one of your opponent's turns, all right, they play a spell. Um, you get to do this on their turn. That makes that that's how the card works. But on that same player's turn, if a different player tries to play an instant during that player's turn, you also get to do it to their library. So it's possible that you could do this to multiple players in one turn. <laughs> it seems crazy. And it does happen on your turn too. If they try to play an instant during your turn, you get to play one of their spells for free. <laughs> if it's not a land. So that's just Maybe in EDH, I just don't see this being in standard um, the way things are right now. I don't see it happening. Even though ramp decks are a thing, I just don't like cards that cost this much and are dependent on your opponent's actions. I don't want your opponent to be able to control 
um, you know, what this card does. I hate cards like that. So I don't think it touches actual competitive play, but commander players probably really like this. But here's the last card I'll talk about today, and this is the one that I want to spend a little bit more time on. This is Grim Flayer right here. Look at that art. Even he's like, yes. Um, this is two mana that's a green and a black for a 2-2 human warrior with trample. It also has whenever Grim Flayer deals combat damage to a player, look at the top three cards of your library. Put any number of them into your graveyard and the rest back on top of your library in any order. And if Delirium is online, it gets plus two, plus two, becoming a 4-4. Four, four. Now I haven't seen such contentious debate on whether or not a card is good since yesterday. <laughs> Since Liliana, like that card everyone was like, this is good, this is terrible. Um, this card I think is a slam dunk, honestly. I feel like this card's really, really good, but I see a lot of people on Mythic Spoiler and on Salvation saying that the card is bad. And I just don't, I don't get it. Honestly, the thing looks modern playable to me, and I know that's going out on a limb, and that's not my expertise. Modern is not. But the card is, at its worst, a 2-2 two, two for 2, that's a decent bear, and there's an ability tacked on. And there's a Sensei's Divining Top ability tacked on to that. And there's a Delirium ability top tacked on to that. All for just 2 mana, like that's so many things that it does. Essentially, for free, like there's no mana abilities on the thing, you know, they just gave it a keyword ability, a Delirium ability, and then something crazy. The Sensei's Divining Top thing is absolutely insane. It's freaking crazy once you get the combat damage through it. I know that combat damage isn't the easiest thing in the world to do, but it has Trample to make that combat damage ability a little bit more palatable. So they have pushed this card very, very far. Okay, so one of the gripes I keep hearing about the card is that Sylvan Advocate just outright beats the card on turn two. Now, first of all, the card could be played alongside Sylvan Advocate in the same deck, but I get what you mean by when comparing the two two drops, Sylvan Advocate just wins in combat. But here's a situation that we'll run into an awful lot because the deck is very powerful and standard and very popular, and the card Sylvan Advocate is very popular. So let's say that we are on the draw against green-white tokens. Our opponent plays Sylvan Advocate on turn two, passes the turn. We play this guy, Grim Flayer, on our second turn, and we pass. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Our opponent untaps, plays a land, and attacks with Sylvan Advocate with Vigilance. Um, we should just take this damage and go to 18. Now, after combat, our opponent will play Nissa Voice of Zendikar in the Green White Tokens deck, or at least optimally for them. They'll create a plant and pass the turn. Now, this is exactly the situation that people don't want to be in when they're evaluating this card. People are saying this situation exactly here is awful. But we actually have a lot of good plays here on our turn three. One is to untap, play a land, and then play Liliana, the last hope and give Sylvan Advocate neg 2, neg 1 until our next turn. That'll make it a 0, 2 and give our opponent some decisions. When we move to combat, our opponent can either block with the Advocate and lose it, but not take any combat damage and avoid um, Grim Flayer's ability triggering, or they can block with the token, which seems foolhardy, or they can just take the 2, which is the likeliest scenario, I think, and then we get his ability trigger. Now, I was getting ready to say that that's Christmas Landy, but it's really not. That's a pretty common situation, and that's only two cards that we need to make it happen. But if we don't play Liliana on turn 3, we can always play removal, like Grasp of Darkness, Ruinous Path, Murder, Ultimate Price, Dead Weight, they all work in this situation on turn three. And if we're in Abzan, we get access to Declaration of Stone or Anguish Done Making on the same turn. Now we can just kill the Advocate in that case and slam in for two damage. Now if we're on the play, by the way, this situation becomes even more advantageous for us. Also, if they play Sylvan Advocate on turn two, we can always just get Delirium on turn three sometimes by going turn one Evolving Wilds, turn two Grim Flayer, turn three Vessel of Nascency and pop it, or we can play Gather the Pack, or we can play Grapple with the Past. Now, all of these can potentially give us Delirium before combat on turn 3 and make our guy at 4-4, outclassing the Advocate. And that's just a couple, three situations that we could be in that best, probably what people are saying is the worst case scenario for this card to be in. And, I mean, anything other than that, we do really well in too. If we're playing against Mono White Aggro, the Liliana and all the removal applies, and his Trample ability reply, applies even more. Because things like, you know, Town Gossip Monger, Dragon Hunter, um, Expedition Envoy, Kithion, some of these will trade with this, yes, but we'll still get that Trample damage in, and we can either enable Delirium or fix our next draw, our next three draws if we want to. So just don't underestimate this card. Don't underestimate the Sensei's Divining Top ability on him, both for enabling Delirium and fixing your draws. 
This is great, especially considering we have other cards that do this already, like Duskwatch Recruiter. People are saying Recruiter is just better. No. Same thing with Sylvan Advocate. The card plays very well alongside Duskwatch Recruiter. There's a combo there. So I just really, really, really like this card. If you cannot tell, and I do think it'll be a thing, um, but let me know, both naysayers and supporters, how you feel about this in the comments. If I've missed anything that makes it just awful, but I really don't see a potential 2-mana 4-4 four, four with a Divining Top ability that also enables Delirium and has Trample just for 2-mana. The card is good. Sorry I yelled. I just think the card's really good and I'm super passionate about it. I want Delirium to be good and I think this card goes a long way. So again, let me know how you feel, but that's all the spoilers for today. That said, there could always be spoilers later on tonight. There have been lately. They've been trying to get us, but we remain ever vigilant. So continue checking out the channel and sub if you haven't yet so you can get that content when I release it. Also, do me a huge favor and hit that thumbs up if you enjoy my content. That helps a ridiculous, untold, untellable amount. But that's all we got for now. So as usual, I'm Dev from SBTG. Thanks for watching, my wizards.